let's counter here. Let's see what we can work. Send that long. Like I say, no getting behind or anything like that, but I trust Sterling's AI just to make good runs anyway. If you've got good wingers, which I know a lot of you guys do, because I come up against you guys in games and you've all got better teams than me anyway. So I know you guys can definitely trust your player's AI. And there we go. That is 1-0. The 4-4-2. This is one of the absolute most staple formations in this game. And today I'm going to be showing you guys the best 442 custom tactics that you can use to resort to when things are just not going your way in games. Let's get into it. Leading on from that point, I really think these tactics are the perfect reset, the perfect go-to when you're kind of on a bad run in champs or something of that nature. And you're trying different formations, different tactics, and nothing's really working. This is the perfect kind of cleansing of your palette when that is going on now at face value you're probably thinking surely not because a lot of you guys actually did request to see these tactics when i was using them in the jackson review video just the other day and honestly it just crossed my mind that you know what maybe sometimes we really overdo it with tactics maybe we mess with width and depth and all these sorts of things too much and maybe we overdo it overdo it with the instructions and particularly with the instructions when we've all got these great cards in our team it was making me think, maybe we really sort of kill the AI of the players by telling them to do such specific things. So these tactics are extremely minimalistic, and I found they really, really bring out the best of your key players. So getting into the tactics, defensive style balance, width and depth both 50. Build up play and chance creation is balance direct passing, and then the width is 50 on the attack as well. Players in the box 5, corners and free kicks, whatever your personal preference is. 442 inherently is just an extremely balanced formation and we are completely going with as balanced as it comes on the face value for these tactics. The reason for that is that it enables you to press if you want to press, you can play passive if you want to be passive, you can throw men forward by triggering runs if you want to but you've still got enough people sat back to cover if you don't want to do that so it basically enables you to manipulate your team in any way you see fit in game. Getting into the player instructions, sticking to this minimalistic mentality, both strikers are completely default. The left mid and right mid are default, except they are both on comeback on defence. This is just to help with that defensive robustness when we are off of the ball. Both of our centre mids are stay back while attacking cover centre. Now, honestly, you could have both on cover centre and balance. You could have one stay back, one balance. But if you're resorting to these like I did when things aren't going your way, I really do think having them both on stay back is the most competitive choice. However, you do have to be a little bit smarter in your attacks to kind of get the overloads and find the space. So if you can master it with them both and stay back, you're laughing. But if you struggle, by all means, try one on balance. And then if you're still struggling, try both on balance. Just remember you are going to be more open on the counter attack if you do do that. As far as the rest of the team, both wing backs are stay back while attacking. A solid back four is key when things are not going your way. And the centre backs and goalkeeper are also just on the default. Probably not what you guys were expecting, but I promise you this minimalistic approach honestly works really, really well. As a lot of you guys saw in my Jackson review video, we create tons of space with this setup and you really just get the best out of your key players. Like I love Tevez's AI, I love Sterling's AI. And honestly, I don't think they've ever played better than they do with these custom tactics. This is the team that we're going to be running with. Let's jump into a live game and I'll show you how to get the most out of the tactics. Let's get into it. The beauty of these tactics is they genuinely will work for anybody because we're not forcing any sort of style of play through the tactics. It really enables you to play however you want to play and it means you can adjust very quickly on the flow with these tactics as well because the tactics aren't forcing you to play any sort of way defensively or offensively. So here we can start off being passive but if we want to start being more direct than we can be. See if we can sneak down this wing. He's read that quite well, to be fair to him. I'm going to track his overlapping wing back here. Just going to hop the ball under the looks of it. So let's counter here. Let's see what we can work. Send that long. Like I say, no getting behind or anything like that, but I trust Sterling's AI just to make good runs anyway. If you've got good wingers, which I know a lot of you guys do, because I come up against you guys in games and you've all got better teams than me anyway. So I know you guys can definitely trust your player's AI. And there we go. That is 1-0. Even though the wing... Uh, sorry, not the wingers. The centre mids are in stay back while attacking. As you can see there, they still get involved. They sit around the edge of the box. And to be honest, I prefer them to sit around the edge of the box than I would for them to like fully commit into the box. It's nice to have those passing options on the edges to cut it back to and then work shooting angles or maybe driven passes into the centre. Once again, I'm going to work this down the wing here. I'm going to step over boost into the space that his Cafu has left. We'll maybe bait going inside and then drive the byline. 
Here we go. That's all we can work here. Maybe hold the ball on again. Oh, that's a good tackle. It's a very, very good tackle. Let's mark the inside. Mark the boy line. Mark the inside. He wants that guy down the wing. He's got it. We've got a whole back full back here, so we're not worried about the defence. We're going to be very robust. We trust our back four. I'm going to do the same as he did to me here. Get it straight over the top. I'm going to cut it inside early, though. And a ball roll driven pass inside. He's read it, but we've nabbed it. One, two. Oh, it's just gone wide. It might have been offside. No, it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> Annoyingly, I probably should have put that one away. Oh, my word. He's giving it us here. Feet. Good angle. Oh, he's just taking an extra touch. Be sensible here on the defence. Mark that runner. That's offside, I think. Okay. Might do a big switch here, just to... Yeah, because that Sterling's getting very, very isolated out here. Say that, then he loses the ball. <laughs> so I'm going to play a bit more of a press here. Just because I don't want to get him too comfortable in his own half. Let's work that nicely down the bile, and I thought he was going to play that inside. It's an easy collection, that one. So you will have to rely on yourself triggering L1 passes and just pressing L1 in general to obviously get people moving as much as you're going to if you're used to having lots of people on like getting behind instructions and things like that. But if you're even a remotely decent player, you'll be doing that anyway. So that isn't something that should be too much of an issue for you. Shoot this. Perfect. Lovely work of the space there. And I think this guy is gone already. Maybe. Am I being ambitious? No. Nope. He is gone. As you guys can see, it's just a formation that really allows you to play super freely. The reason I'm not the biggest sort of voucher for something like the 4-3-2-1, like so many of the best players in this game are, is it just forces a specific style of play. And honestly, every time I've tried to force that specific style of play, I have success to a certain extent, but I always find I play my best FC24 when I am just being creative, utilising skill moves, making sure I'm doing lots of cool like little patterns with the passing, and just like enjoying it, not overthinking it. You know, I don't want to have to force an overlapping wing back through every time just to get space down a byline and score really mechanical goals. I love just playing freely and like before I was making videos, I would be way more even skill heavy than I am now because. I was just playing for fun, you know, it'd be all about creating space, trying to score crazy goals, and as much as I still try and do that to a certain extent, I definitely feel like with the way the game has gone in recent times, there's still a more, a bigger emphasis on winning now than anything else. So, I feel like I've toned it down a little bit, but I'm still able to truly implement a really free-flowing style with these custom tactics because it doesn't force your hand. And I think it will be exactly the same for you guys as well. If you're someone that really just never triggers your own runs, then these won't be for you. I'd probably say that's the only sort of person that's going to struggle with these. But in reality, if you're not doing that, that's just something you need to try and implement into your game. But nonetheless, let me know how you guys get on down below with these tactics. If you've got anything like the sort of teams that I come up against game in game out I know you guys are going to have an absolute field day with these with your Mia Hams and your Mbappe player of the months and so on and so forth if you did enjoy the video today guys you can check out my custom tactics playlist linked in the description below for you guys to check out but as always guys if you did make it this far in the video I really appreciate your time if you did enjoy it please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn your bell on take care guys